Good evening guys, welcome along to this video. This is about history, TT and the Peel of Dunray. The Peel of Dunray no longer stands. It stood in a place called Drumchapel in the 16th century. They reckon this bell tower was built in the 1530s uh, by a king, possibly from uh, Ayrshire. Something else stood on the land before, they reckon maybe 12th century or Roman. Uh, it's not far from where the Romans were. Uh, it's behind the Antonine Wall. The Romans were in Drumchapel as well. The earliest settlers in Drumchapel were Bronze Age and they had a sand quarry which is now stood at where Goals is. Basically this sand quarry uh, was excavated I think it was about 15 years ago and they found, I think it was an eight pound stone axe head which can now be seen in the Kelvin Grove Museum. So that's something to look out for if you ever go there. Uh, it's a little axe head from the Bronze Age people. Uh, they were the first settlers here, then it would have been Romans, the Romans were here. They dug up a road behind them, Chapel Road, when they were putting in a new one, and they found Roman coins under the road, so it's reckoned that the Romans marched all over this area. Any of you guys from Drum Chapel, you never know, you could strike it rich. Although townies came in in the early 1950s, and this tower was actually destroyed, so let's go on and tell you a bit about the tower and tell you what happened to it. Uh, this is an attraction which stood in the north of Dunray, it says to have been built in the 1530s. This historic building was the Peel of Dunray. What a building, eh? Couldn't imagine anybody knocking it down, but they did. For over 400 years until 1956, this was one of Drumchapel's most famous landmarks. The building stood, which was 16 feet high, Walls were two feet thick, stood in a stockyard of a farm of Northton Rye on a site between Abbots Hall and Halgreen Avenue. Apparently it had been built somewhere between 1530 and 1540 by Lawrence Crawford but possibly eh, a similar building had stood there on the same ground hundreds of years earlier. Now I like that when they say hundreds of years earlier so that could be early medieval or it could be Roman Bronze Age, we don't really know. So the tower was built as a vantage point uh, to see far distances basically. Uh, the drum or the ridge, perhaps some ancient king, king had built his fort. After all, the place, the name of Dunray means ridge of the king. So they reckon a king had built his bell tower there, so he had a good vantage point. Well, there you go, 14th to 15th century, so we're just going to scroll down and I'll tell you basically what happened. So with the building of housing estates and the invasion of townies, the historical monument came under threat for demolition. Despite pleas and offer of cash and aid by the director of the museums and art galleries of Glasgow Archaeology Society, the National Trust for Scotland, the Ministry of Works and the Glasgow Tree Lovers Society, however, the Housing Committee of Glasgow Corporation had reached a decision which seemed which seemed immovable. The Conservative MP also raised question in the House of Commons. Scotston Sir James Hutchinson invited the Secretary of State to take steps to prevent the demolition of such a historic building. One of the main opponents of saving the appeal was Peter G. Forrester, the uh, convener of Glasgow Cooperation of Housing Committee. He said at the time to say the Peel of Dunray should be maintained is like saying some of, Glasgow's some of Glasgow's ancient slums should be maintained for all time. We can't agree. So despite the offers of cash from the bodies of interest in saving the Peel, uh, the Housing Committee of Glasgow Cooperation upheld their decision on the 1st of November 1956 and the demolition, uh, the demolition began on the 6th of November 1956, five days later, and was completed in a very short time. The original stones can still be seen today uh, to form part of the Rockery Garden in remembrance at St Mary's Parish Church in Dunray Road. Disgusting how they could even get away with something like that. To demolish a historic monument like this, absolutely disgusting. How did they get away with it? Just shows you back in the day there was no laws in put in place to save any historic buildings. So any of you guys that you know go around the old castles and that now think yourself lucky because back in the day in the early 1950s they could demolish a historic monument like this. I'm surprised if there's actually any left. And it's just a, a classic example of how 
housing associations had the upper hand over TT, the art galleries and all these other people. Wow, absolutely amazing, disgusting. One of Drum Chapel's best monuments is gone. I'll take you to see one which is a crypt of the Cahoons. It's the only one that's left in Drum Chapel. And I'll do another video as well on the Gurning Gates, which of course is another video, which is another part of Drum Chapel's history which was demolished, which was a scandal as well. So, yeah, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed the video. You can guarantee that if you were in Drum Chapel, you'd be thinking right now, where is that tower? I'm going to metal detector. You never know. If it's been there since the 12th century, it's going to be a lot of junk digging, but there might be a few hammies there. You just never know. So on that note, guys, good luck, happy hunting, and I'll catch you guys in another video soon. Bye for now.